Hello, welcome to another video where I basically just show you how I organize the junk in my house. Dogs are going crazy in the background, don't mind them. I spend a lot of time in the kitchen, whether it's prepping my own meals or working on recipe development for my blog. I also want to give a big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video and I will tell you guys more about them at the end. So I'm going to give you a run through of my kitchen and how I like to organize it and hopefully you can come away with some ideas to streamline the process in your own kitchen so you can actually enjoy cooking a little bit more. Okay, as the first title suggests, we're going to start off by zoning our space. Now, I like to do this because it helps me know where little items, homes are, like where things go back to, so it doesn't get all disorganized and chaotic, especially if you're trying to pack something away quickly, or if you're looking for something, you're like, oh my gosh, where on earth did I put this? I like to try to keep things in the same place all the time. Here's a quick little overview of the pantry area. I'll give you an overview of all the little elements which I've added, which I find make the whole organization experience so much more enjoyable and user-friendly. I want to start off with these little wooden storage containers, which I got. I think they were only a few dollars from Kmart, but I use them just to put the, the clumsy little objects in, like the tins of tuna, the peanut butter, little baking supplies and things like that, so that they're neat and organized. Now, I also like to use a lot of package-free products and I like to pick up a lot of supplies in bulk without all the plastic packaging. Obviously, I don't do that for all of my ingredients, but I like to try and do it where I can. So in order to store them and have them last a fairly long time, I like to keep them in airtight jar containers. Now, you can use the mason jar type or you can recycle other jars which you've used. If you have the ability to, like if you have the vertical height, it's worth getting some stacking containers. So over toward the right in my pantry, I have these little wire racks, which you can actually stack up. And that way we can keep all the produce visible and we're not gonna have potatoes growing these giant antennas hidden away at the back of the cupboard somewhere. If you are someone who has lots of spices in their pantry and you hate digging through them, it's worth looking at a spice storage option. So I found this little rack. I'll try and leave as much stuff linked in the description box as I can, but it has been a lifesaver because it takes so much time and it looks neat and tidy always. Now I think it's also worth labeling your food just so that you know what it is or whether it's dates. So I like to use whiteboard marker for foods that expire and I'll write the dates on the containers or I have this Dymo embossing labeler where I can print out these little labels to stick onto my glass jars. I'm so happy that I decided to do this. Get yourself a Lazy Susan, they're like $8 put it in your pantry and put all your oils on it because then you're not going to accidentally knock something out of the cupboard. I have done that. I am very clumsy. And it just makes it so easy to find things. So I have two set up at the top, um, one for the more expensive oils and one for the sprays and Mitch's honey and things like that. Now, to make sure that you know exactly what ingredients you have on hand, it's worth keeping things visible. I used to have the problem where things would end up at the back of the fridge and I would think I'd run out and I would buy a second one. But now that I've been able to consistently keep it much more organized, that problem doesn't happen. So here's a little glimpse into the freezer. So I've got some frozen fruit and vegetables. We've got some frozen meat at the backs and some frozen egg whites. Let's take a little dive into the fridge. I'm sorry, it's not as like super organized and neat and tidy, but this is just how our fridge is. I like to use containers to make sure things are separated because again, this saves me from like rummaging around through everything. And there we go, whiteboard marker for the best before dates. For produce that I picked up that didn't have packets, like fresh produce that I put in produce bags, I like to keep them in mason jars in the crisper section of the fridge. And how cute is the egg tray? I don't know why, I just think it's so cute. 
Okay, let's talk about the area under the sink because for me this tends to get messy because there's like plumbing and drain pipes and things in the way. So what I did is I put a storage rack hooked in the door for things that I grab a lot of the time. So this could be like cloth wipes or sponges or whatever you prefer to use. And then under the sink I've put some storage baskets with zero waste cleaning supplies and just other bits and pieces that I use regularly. So while we're at it, I'll give you a quick little overview of where some other things are. If you can get a, a magnetic knife block, do it. It's been awesome because they're not rubbing up against all the other utensils in the drawers. And I also like to keep this little plate here next to my stove top so whenever I'm cooking I can just rest the utensils on it. Drawer containers are a lifesaver as well for keeping things organized and in their actual places. So usually these things get thrown around and it's hard to find the things you want. And this is my junk drawer and I like to think it's fairly organized for a junk drawer. If you have the space to do this, like a deep drawer or maybe a shelf or something, I would absolutely recommend doing it. And it's to like horizontally stack your cutting boards and your baking trays and it saves so much space if you have the vertical height to do it. We've also got our little bin set up so it's just a compartmentalized one with rubbish on one side and recycling on the other so that's all tucked away and then I like to keep a compost bin on the top there and that can feed the worms or go in the compost. Once you've organized your kitchen, if you want some ideas for recipes, you can jump on over to my blog, which is Eat Run Lift. Let me show you where you can find them. On eatrunlift.me, there is a recipe index where you can find heaps of yummy recipes to try out. It won't look like this when you go on there because I'm in the back end of it using Squarespace to show you how easy it is to put together blog posts. Squarespace is the platform that I have been using for six years for both my Eat Run Lift blog and my personal journal. It's incredibly simple to use. They have an amazing customer service team. And you know, if you have a design in mind, you can build it. Or you can take one of their really beautiful pre-designed templates and apply that immediately so it doesn't take you long to get up and running, whether it's a website for a brand or it's a portfolio or it's an e-commerce store. They have all your social medias built in so you can share across your other platforms and you can also get in contact with your mailing list all through the Squarespace platform. If you'd like to try it out, I have a 10% discount code for you so you can go in, try it out, and as soon as you're ready to publish your website, go to squarespace.com slash Rachel Ost and it will give you 10% off your first purchase. If you haven't seen my What I Eat In A Day video, you wouldn't know this, but I made a TikTok. I feel like a really old loser. No, I don't dance on there. No, I don't lip sync on there. But I hope you guys are all doing really well. I'm looking forward to catching up with you in the comments below and I'll catch you in my next upload. Bye.